you're nothing. You're not worth anything. You haven't got anything. He's a Hindu monk. He went, you know, he went to IIT, he went to the Indian Institute of Technology. He's super smart. I'm only going if we go to a bar afterwards. It was like staring at the most beautiful woman on the planet. I said, this beautiful brown man just told me he was a monk. Let me subscribe to him on Spotify and base my entire life around his advice. I realized that being an accessory was as bad as committing a felony. You know who I don't trust no more? I realized that it wasn't good enough to think I wasn't racist. I needed to be anti-racist. Jay Shetty. So there's like one part of the story, it's like, can you please go into detail about this? And they never do. It's the fact that this entrepreneur was once a monk. What is this? It doesn't matter that he is the furthest thing from a monk today. When someone is sharing, do we care enough to pay attention? Are we just absorbed in ourselves? Stop being distracted and sad. Otherwise, you're ruining your future, your husband is going to leave you, and your dad's going to die in the hospital. Why did Jay Shetty lie about his backstory? It's not like he reposted somebody else's meme. He crops their name out and puts in Jay Shetty. A personal connection. For sure. And someone really For feels sure. comfortable, rather than it's like a PR no, thing. No, it was... comments of any kind to anyone mentioned in this video on behalf of me or yourself. The purpose of this video is to give my commentary and opinion on matters of public concern. Thank you. Is it from the heart? Or it's from place? them. Oh my god. It's theirs. It's their one from their temple. Welcome to BJ Investigates. I'm the host. In today's episode, we're going to get a little bit into Jay Shetty, the Indian, the Indian origin, London-born, self-help coach, guru, monk turned celebrity that recently experienced a little bit of a fall from grace. The man went from one of the most loved online coaching personalities to basically a pariah, an alleged liar, an alleged fraud, an alleged phony overnight. Basically what happened was this one guy was hired to do an interview with him like last year in 2023. And he said he went to one of Jay Shetty's talks or whatever, and he saw some things that alarmed him. Basically, he never did end up doing the interview fluff piece for Jay Shetty, but he's pretty much been investigating him for the last year. I think, it, you know, I, I think I was like, all right, well, maybe I'll make fun of him a little bit in this profile. But then I go to his live show and I was pretty appalled by what he did at his live show. And that's what wow. kind of- I didn't even know he did a live show. Him. So what is his live yeah. show like? First of all, it's more than three hours long. It's close to three and a half hours long. There was an intermission. It's him on stage just kind of doing a variety show but with a self-help twist. So the first segment, he opened it with a rap, which I don't know if you know. He rapped? Jay. His, a rap? Yes. Oh, I remember he kind has of a like, microphone tattoo. Yeah, his original aspiration in life was to be a rap. Well, the guy puts the article out and he basically called into question pretty much everything Jay Shetty has ever said about his origin story. And we're gonna talk about a few of those things today, but also wanted to dig a little deeper into some of the things that the Guardian article did talk about because there were some things I think got a little bit glossed over that deserve a little further inspection. So let's start with answering who is Jay Shetty, why do we care, and why did he amass such a huge following of all of these people who wanted to actually even take advice from him? First of all, he's a huge guru. Yeah, I mean, you probably saw it in the intro, but he's huge online. He has like probably hundreds of millions of subscribers and followers and things across all the platforms. He actually conducted one of Kobe Bryant's last interviews that he would ever do. He's interviewed Michelle Obama. He's interviewed with the Indian Prime Minister Modi. He then, a couple weeks after that, was interviewing Joe Biden, the President of the United States. He's been on Ellen. He's been on the Red Table with Jada Pinkett Smith. About how realistic that is. Yes. Yeah. Studies show that the activity in the brain that gets triggered is the same as detoxing from cocaine. Mm -hmm. He has been the personal life coach and guru to people like Will Smith. And Dar Man even made a whole entire skit video based on Jay Shetty's life. So, what you think? You really think people are going to watch this? As a media executive, I could promise you right now that your idea will never work. Jay started recording inspirational videos by himself. He learned everything on his own without the help of anyone else. I was wrong about you. After we met, I started seeing your videos everywhere. You really did make wisdom go viral. And if you're anything like me, you might wonder how that all came to be. I mean, 
If I didn't know any better, I might assume that the man was some sort of industry plant. Well, there's a few different versions of the story, and alarmingly, all of the different versions come from Jay Shetty himself in different times and places. But the gist is this. Jay claims that he was in business school in London, being a failure to his parents, minding his own business, trying to be an entrepreneur and climb the corporate ladder, when this random monk just happened to be coming to speak as a guest lecturer at one of the auditoriums or whatever at Jay's business school. Now his story goes that he didn't even wanna go to this guest lecture monk speech. Pretty much the way he makes it sound like he was dragged there, kicking and screaming, and his friend actually had to bribe him with going to drink at the bar after the monk's speech. I mean, I don't know if I believe that, but that's Jay's version of the story. We'll put some clips in here, don't take my word for it. And this monk was invited to speak, and I kind of just went because one of my friends forced me to. At that time, I was listening to CEOs and entrepreneurs and business people and marketers who, who I thought that's what I was aspiring to be like. And then I hear this monk, and he captivated me like no one had ever captivated me before. It was like staring at the most beautiful woman on the planet. And I was going to business school and every week we had CEOs, entrepreneurs, celebrities coming to speak and share their stories. And I was fascinated by how people went from nothing to something. Mm -hmm. And one week I was told that this monk was invited and I actually said to one of my friends, I said, I'm only going if we go to a bar afterwards because I wasn't interested in hearing a monk's perspective on life. So my friend forced me to go. He promised me we'd go to a bar afterwards and it changed my life. Story goes that that lecture changed Jay's life, changed his perspective, changed his mentality on things to such an extensive degree that it caused him to change the course of his life. He no longer apparently wanted to be a business entrepreneur, although look, listen, he did end up going back to that route. He returned to the dream after all, but he essentially was so inspired by this monk that he wanted to also become a monk. Now, at least some parts of that story do seem to be true and verifiable with receipts. But as we've seen time and time again on this channel and elsewhere in the world, the devil is often alive and well, hiding right there in the details. Jay Shetty was born on September 6, 1987 in London to a Hindu family of Indian origin. When Jay was 10 years old, his father would become a practitioner of a Hindu denomination known as ISKCON, which if you blink, you might miss it, but this becomes very important in just a few minutes. So Jay was raised in Barnett, North London by his parents and attended a very prestigious high school that was actually founded in the 1500s by Queen Elizabeth I herself. Anyway, this school is apparently actually in the top 1% of schools in in the nation and only 6% of the students that apply get in each year, not 60. It seems to also be another one of these Hogwarts operations where it's all boys and there's houses and crests and reprogramming and all that. So, I mean, yeah, it seems like Jay comes from a very privileged and highly educated background. Anyway, according to Jay, his Indian parents wanted him to become a doctor or a lawyer, but that is not the path that he would choose. He would graduate from that all boys Hogwarts Queen of England high school and make his way into business school in London at a place called Cass Business School, where he continued on his own dreams of becoming a successful entrepreneur, not a lawyer or doctor. And as I mentioned earlier, it was during his time at this school where he claims to have heard a monk speak for the first time between the ages of 18 and 21, and that speech would change the course of his life forever. And again, by all Jay's accounts, he claims he was reluctant to even go to the speech. And also just something I noticed whenever he's discussing this situation is he often frames this encounter like it is some random monk out, just dropped out of the middle of nowhere, like a house on the Wicked Witch of the West. Like he didn't know this monk from Adam, never heard of this man in his life, random monk, didn't wanna go, had to be dragged there. That becomes important in just a second. In his book, Think Like a Monk, Jay talks about this monk's lecture and he states, quote, now for the first time, I was in the presence of someone who had deliberately gone from riches to rags instead of from rags to riches. On his own website, his genius website, Jay says he didn't even hear a monk speak until he was like 21 years old. What I find to be interesting and dare I say alarming is that Jay never seems, I mean, he might've done it somewhere and I missed it, but from what I've seen, he never seems to actually acknowledge or mention the fact that this monk, Garanga Das, was at the time and is still today one of, if not the most famous and forward-facing members of this ISKCON religion. ISKCON is short for the International Society of Krishna Consciousness. 
And this is the religion or the denomination of the religion that Jay's father switched to or converted to or began being a practitioner of when Jay was 10 years old. It's not in and of itself a religion. It claims to be a denomination of Hinduism, but they basically worship Krishna as the supreme godhead. Iskon Bangalore started making cartoons of Krishna with fake stories to sell it on a commercial level. They are building luxurious apartments and even an international school with Western educations. But what it has turned out to be is disgraceful. See for yourself. So the same exact religion that Jay Shetty was already a member of, the same exact denomination that Jay Shetty's father had already been a member of and brought Jay up in from the time he was 10 years old, that's the same exact denomination of this random monk. And it's alarming to me that Jay never seems to have mentioned that. And it just starts to make me ask questions such as, why not? If that's the religion or the denomination that you follow, why not be proud and tell the truth. The Guardian article also seems to take issue with this as well, saying, quote, Shetty almost never discloses his association with ISKCON, perhaps concerned with the organization's problematic history, which includes allegations in the 1970s and 80s that members engaged in severe corporal punishment, child bleep abuse, and on two occasions, conspiracy to commit murder. Instead, Jay says he, right, we're reading the quote. Instead, he presents his spirituality in vague terms. At about seven this morning, the state police set up roadblocks to keep visitors out and Krishnas in their community. Armed with federal search warrants, 50 federal and state officials raided five locations. Items seized included financial records, files, and computers. They also got box loads, which filled moving vans full of bumper stickers, general purpose stickers, and hats bearing the logos and colors of professional football and and baseball teams and various colleges and universities. One unidentified Krishna stopped along the road, claimed that the Krishnas are sent in teams to sports arenas. They offer stickers or hats to fans, then ask for donations. The Krishna claimed that this is a nationwide practice by all Krishnas, not only those in Marshall County. He said he and other participants had no knowledge that the logos and colors might bear copyright. An outlaw Swami pleads innocent in a gruesome murder. Now, here's Larry King. Is he an unconventional religious leader or a ruthless cult dictator? Swami Bhaktipad is in the eye of a storm in a case involving murder, kidnapping, and mail fraud. Son of a Baptist minister, Bhaktipad founded a Hare Krishna community community in the hills of West Virginia 21 years ago. In a swirl of controversy, the Swami was kicked out of the Krishna movement three years ago. Bhaktipad, previously known as Keith Ham, has been named in five counts of racketeering charges, including conspiracy to commit murder against Stephen Bryant, who had waged a one-man campaign against him. You've that probably is... heard about a religious sect called the Hare Krishnas. They've been chanting and panhandling for money since the movement began in the early 60s. Our first story tonight is about a place called New Vrindavan, West Virginia. It used to be the largest Krishna community in the country. A few years back, one of the Hare Krishna members, a man named Stephen Bryant, dropped out of New Vrindavan and launched a one-man holy war. Bryant accused the Krishnas there of fraud, sexually molesting children, and drug dealing. Bryant's charges were dismissed at the time as the rantings of a fanatic. That is until last year when Bryant turned up murdered. New Vrindavan is now a community under legal siege. Investigators are looking into all of Bryant's old charges and the possibility that the guru, a man named Kirtananda Swami Bhaktapad, wanted Stephen Bryant killed. Did you give the order to murder Steve Bryant? <laughs> so as long as you were quiet about it, okay to sell drugs to make money for the Krishnas? See, yeah, it was about me, me and maybe 10 more people involved in this, see? Let's talk just a little bit. I do not have time to get into all of it, but I just want to touch just a little bit on the denomination itself, and then we can get back into Jay. So my question is why? Why hide your association? Why downplay your association? In particular, if you were a monk for this religion and now you are trying to spread the word of this religion throughout denomination. I'm saying religion, but y'all know what I mean. If you're trying to spread the word of this particular denomination of the religion throughout the world, why would you hide it? That's my question. And maybe he's not hiding it, but I wanted to know further. So let me show you what I found. So this ISKCON denomination is known by a couple other names. And one is the Hare Krishna or Hare Krishna movement. Now, little known to people, it actually was predominantly white people in the Hare Krishna religion denomination until probably about 2010 
or 2016, something like that. It was basically was started by this guru type guy and it was largely based in the United States. Then he moved back to India and then that's whenever more Indian origin individuals began to practice the religion. The denomination was established like many fringe denominations in the 1960s as part of a backlash to the sort of peace and love, free love, hippie culture that was going on. And instead of free love and all of that, the Hare Krishna movement or the ISKCON philosophy really depended on self-denial. So you're not doing everything you want to do. You're denying yourself of things that you might want to do and in particular you would deny yourself of any mind-altering substances such as illicit drugs or even caffeine I'm hearing uh, you wouldn't eat meat and you wouldn't gamble and there was something else oh yeah you can't have sex unless it's only for the purpose of having a baby now in and of themselves I think all of these are tenets and aspects of other religions so nothing too alarming off the bat as far as I'm concerned now they also would attempt to achieve a state of transcendence or a state of ecstasy or heightened bliss by chanting this mantra which I will insert a video clip of Trisha Paytas demonstrating for you right here Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Push myself back. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama. So recently, completely unbeknownst to me when all of this was going on, I actually had the opportunity to visit a very iconic and important temple in relation to this religion. It was the one in Krishna's hometown called uh, Viridian, Virindrian. I'll put it right here. I'll put pictures right here. Um, but the monk, I had the opportunity to talk to one of these monks myself, and the monk basically gave us four rules about what they, you know, practice and what they believe. And he said, those four rules, no meat, no sex before marriage, and no sex for the uh, purpose of anything else other than to have a baby or to try to make one. Uh, no gambling, I don't know, whatever that is about. And uh, what was the other thing they told No meat, no sex, no, uh, no gambling, and uh, no drugs. No drugs was the other one. Also, they gave us these little... What's this called? Not a mala. Mala. They gave us these, and again, I'll let Trisha Paytas demonstrate what you're supposed to do with it. Um, okay, this religion, like I said, off the bat, it's like, okay, I don't really, whatever, you know, I, I don't practice a religion, but I'm very interested in learning about them. And some religions off the bat, I'm like, mm, mm I don't like that rule. No, no. This one's like, okay, whatever, no meat, no sign, whatever. The other is just pretty run of the mill, right? But they have a lot of controversies themselves. I mean, no fewer than you would expect for a fringe denomination that was started in the 60s. Insert CIA uh, Lucifer footage. Um, we have members just throughout the world, and it's a legitimate religion. Um, thousands, hundreds of thousands? Hundreds of thousands, I can't say, thousands, easily. What is it, Dr. What? Aquino? <laughs> Dr. Aquino, the high priest of the Church of Set? Temple of Set. Temple of Set, also a colonel, interestingly enough, in the United States Army. There's actually a whole expose documentary on this from children who grew up in the religion. And according to these survivors, children as young as five years old had been separated from their parents and sent to these Krishna boarding schools in India called Gurukula. I don't know if I'm saying that right. Y'all can go watch the documentary and you should. Uh, but at these boarding schools, the boys were ordered, apparently allegedly, I don't know, I wasn't there. But according to this documentary, the boys were ordered to engage in certain type of relations with the spiritual masters at the boarding schools and the girls were married off to men who were like twice their age. Again, allegations. Two ISKCON members were apparently also unalived by a fellow devotee because they had spoken out against the organization and been critical of it. And that guy is now in prison serving his prison sentence, converting people to the Hare Krishna movement. <laughs> Most I'm of the surprised. devoted live below the poverty line while much of their labor has gone into building this. The Palace of Gold, a lavish shrine that is part of Bhaktapad's master plan to build a Hare Krishna theme park here in West Virginia. As you see, we could develop with Stephanie. Critics say he's become obsessed with this $100 million theme park dream. You can also see over here to the Garbhagruha without the balcony getting in his way. What's going on with the swimming pool? What doesn't show up on the building plans, though, is the Krishna undercurrent of violence. Well, we've got a human skeleton, and we've recovered, uh, for the most part, all of it. The police have been called many times to New Vrindavan to investigate suspicious Krishna deaths. More than once, they have dug up a skeleton. 
This one was a murdered Krishna named Charles St. Dennis. The denomination has also had to pay nearly a $10 million settlement to some of its former members who claim to have been victims. Not only that, but the denomination has also come under fire in its earlier years for its association with members of the United States intelligence community and was specifically outlawed in Russia in part because Russian higher-ups believed the Hare Krishna movement was an intelligence operation put on by the CIA to brainwash people into being useless to society. But consider the source, you know what I mean? Anyway, the denomination, kind of like Scientology, has rebranded since then, since all that scandal. And it's kind of spread its tentacles into other areas like meditation centers, yoga centers, and other things like that that claim and purport to be secular and not, strictly speaking, associated with the church, like sort of Narconon, right? But then when you actually look into it, it's absolutely associated and run by members of that church. Anyway, I had a few interesting experiences at this temple myself and I thought about putting it in this video but I really don't want to get too caught up in the weeds so what I'm gonna do is we do have a brand new podcast and I'm gonna tell y'all a little bit more about my personal experiences at the Hare Krishna temple when I went in India in Krishna's hometown make sure that you are uh, signed up and notifications and subscriptions on and all that. So everything seemed to be going great for Jay. He was making money on content and making friends with celebrities and all that. He even set up an online coaching business where he was charging people up to $7,000 per semester to get this, I guess, equivalent of a master's degree, which... I mean, I would have been skeptical of that just off the bat. But one fateful day in February 2024, it would all come crumbling down around him. This Guardian article came out and sent shockwaves across the global internet community. And you should go and read the article yourself. I definitely am not going to have time to read it word by word or anything like that today. But I do want to get into, like I said, just a couple things and drill a little deeper into a few things that they do mention in the article. But I'm sure he just didn't have time to cover every single thing he found or whatever. First of all, the article pays a lot of attention to the fact that Jay is inconsistent with what age he actually was whenever this whole monk came to the school situation happened. According to the article, he's given different ages. He said he was 18, he said he was 19, he said he was 20, he said he was 21. It's kind of all over the place as far as how old he was, which prompted the author of this article to dig deeper and try to get a timeline of exactly when that monk came to the business school and gave the speech. And just to remind you, Jay Shetty has said before that the first time he ever heard a monk speak ever in his life was when he was 21 years old. And you remember whenever he said he wasn't actually interested in hearing a monk's perspective on life and he had to be dragged to the meeting basically by his toenails or whatever? Well, the receipts that this Guardian guy pulled up are pretty compelling evidence to the content. So this guy, he reached out to the monk himself, Guranga Das or whatever his name is, and he got the dates of when he came to the school. And the monk said that he came to the business school to make the speech in 2007, which would put Jay Shetty at least 19 years old and no older than 20 years old because that's how old he was during that school year. He turned 20 in September, as we know, because that's his birthday. So he's probably 20 years old, not 18, like he had previously stated. And there's more receipts than that, that this Guardian guy dug up. In this 2006 YouTube video, you can clearly see Jay Shetty attending a youth event with the ISKCON organization. It's the youth group is known as IPS. You can clearly see him here. Here he is rapping with a monk. Here he is doing smelling salts. <laughs> this is from 2006. He's on the youth group trip in France with the ISKCON youth group. Now there's also a press release that came out in 2008, wherein Jay Shetty has a feature. He talks about how he joined the religion and all of that. And it says in there that not only was he the chairperson of that youth group at the time of the 2008 article release, the press release, but he had been the chairperson of that group for two years, which means if you just put it on the timeline real quick, the monk comes to the business school in 2007, Jay Shetty in November 2008 had been the chairperson of the IPS for two years, which means that when the monk came to the school, he wasn't some random monk. He wasn't some guy that Jay Shetty had never heard of. He was the most front facing person of the entire religion or denomination. And Jay Shetty was already the chairperson of the ISKCON youth group. So Jay has been a very, very uh, sincere student and uh, he has mentioned about our meeting in the, in the book, I think like a monk. And uh, 
Actually, I met him first in 2006, around that time. Actually, I met him first in 2006. Actually, I met him first in 2006. That doesn't add up with the story that he didn't care to hear a monk's perspective on life and that he just some random monk that showed up and he had to be dragged there by his fingertips, toenails or whatever in the hell else. It's not adding up to me. Some of this, some of this can't be true. The problem is it's Jay Shetty's word, which contradicts not only with its own self, but the public record. This video is from 2006. Then there's a video from 2007 with Jay Shetty, who would have been 20 years old maybe at the time, maybe 20, I would have to look at the date, 20, 21 years old. He's dancing around in the Kirtan circle with not only any old monk, that specific monk, that guy. So it's like, yeah, maybe the guy came and did the speech before that. I guess it still could be true, but it ain't looking good for Jay Shetty when you start looking at the receipts. And what looks even less good is that the author of this article of The Guardian says that as soon as you started calling these people up and asking questions, some of these videos and these internet receipts went down. But as y'all know, the devil works hard, but the way back machine works hard. I don't think anybody works harder than Chris Jenner. That's why we didn't mention her this time. Anyway, in this 2008 press release, you also have Jay Shetty admitting that he was into a life of dealing drugs and doing drugs. And I'll put it right here. Don't take my word for it. So I think for me, the most important thing isn't even that Jay Shetty is charging people for his wisdom or whatever. I mean, the, the Guardian article does focus a lot on the fact that Jay Shetty claims that he got all of this monk education in an ashram outside of Mumbai, which is in India. But in the article, he kind of attacks that premise and says, no, he actually got his monk education mostly in England, right outside of his hometown of London. Um, I don't really care. It don't make a difference to me where he was educated as a monk. Although I do think it is important to point out where somebody's story doesn't line up with the truth or with reality. Um, I'm also not that upset that Jay Shetty is charging people for his wisdom or for his coaching for two reasons. Um, number one, people make the choice to do that. And yes, it is misleading to say that you're accredited by all these universities and you have all this stuff going on that you actually don't have going on. But the reviews for the course do seem to be overwhelmingly positive. It does seem as though people like the course, they like taking the course. The Guardian guy talked to people about the course and they did say, yeah, I mean, it's expensive, but I am happy with what I've learned, okay? So did he do his stuff in India or not? I don't know. Did he maybe perhaps inflate his associations and affiliations with universities in order to sell more products? It could be argued. I mean, a reasonable mind could agree that that's what happened. But for me, the most astonishing thing here is that he covers up and hides almost, in my opinion, his affiliation and association with this ISKCON religion. It just makes me wonder why. He was the chairperson of the youth group for two years. He's clearly all up in the mix with this religion or this denomination, and it just, it skews me out. Why is he not telling the truth? He's saying the first time he ever heard a monk speak was whenever he was 18 or was it 21? First time he ever heard a monk speak was whenever he was 21, but there's clear and convincing compelling evidence from the Wayback Machine. He was dancing and spinning and rapping with these people whenever he was like 19 or 20 years old, 18 or 19 years old, whatever the case may be. Um, and this is, you know, and even by his own accounts, he was already the chairperson of the ISKCON youth group whenever the monk came to his college. He even mentions the college in the press release in the November 2008 thing. So it's almost like, I don't know, <clears throat> one could be forgiven for speculating. The man was an industry plant. The man was a religion plant. I ain't even saying he's a CIA plant. I think that he's the Tom Cruise of Krishna. That's what they <laughs> that's what they call him in the article. It's just giving that. It's just giving that to me. And ultimately, it's possible that Jay Shetty actually does have some good life advice and some good life coaching advice. I don't think that the two necessarily have to be mutually exclusive, where it's like, did he maybe fabricate and straight up tell false statements about his origin story? And then is he maybe right about some of his teachings and some of his practices? I think they could both be true, but it does call into question, you know, someone purporting to be a spiritual guru, you have certain assumptions about somebody like that. Like, for example, that they would be honest and truthful and transparent. And, you know, as I was reading his actual origin story or the other alternative versions of it, I'm like, why couldn't he have just said that? You know, yeah, I practiced this denomination 
you don't have to i can share with you some of the things that i've learned from it i can share with you some of the things that i've learned elsewhere outside of this denomination it's not about this denomination at all i just happen to practice it here's some life advice yeah i did study at an ashram it was in england it wasn't in india like i don't understand why it is still i don't know why it is that all these different versions exist. I don't know why it is that he wouldn't have just been more forthcoming, especially considering he does seem to have devoted his life to this denomination. He wanted to study under this guru. He did in fact, I guess, study under him. So, I mean, really the question is still out there of why all these different stories exist. But one thing I will say is, when you're not telling the truth, it usually is a little devil in the details and you're gonna expose yourself. When you're telling the truth, usually the story just keeps adding up, at least the very important parts. Like, I wasn't interested in hearing a monk speak about his perspective on life. Meanwhile, you are in that religion with that monk, in that denomination with that monk, definitely knew who that guy was, and were the chairperson of the youth organization of that guy's denomination i mean that that just that is the most egregious thing to me in my opinion leave down in the comments below what you think about the situation and make sure that you are subscribed and signed up for the podcast as well because it's going to be on this channel too you'll be able to find it in the meantime facts ain't defamation love you mean it okay bye